Thank you very much, Principal. Now may I ask you to present our honorary graduate. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. Mr. Chancellor, by the authority of the Senate, I have the pleasure to present to you that at your hands she may receive the Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa, Anne Dowsett Johnson. Acclaimed journalist, author, administrator, and public policy advocate. Proud graduate of Queen's University, whose formative years spent in Northern Ontario, rural South Africa, and Toronto, would give her a unique ability to notice the significance of details that others might overlook, the proverbial story beyond the story. Award-winning columnist and feature writer who would be the guiding force in the creation of Maclean's Magazine's annual university rankings, as well as the Maclean's Guide to Canadian Universities whose expertise in higher education policy would lead to her appointment as vice principal of McGill University, directing development, alumni relations, and strategic communications for that institution, and whose lived experience with the struggles and triumph of overcoming her addiction has made her a powerful and uncompromising champion for meaningful public policy on alcohol including a reduction of the stigma surrounding addiction and better public education on its risks. A thought-provoking author whose 14-part series on women and alcohol that appeared in the Toronto Star, combined with the publication of her critically acclaimed best-selling book, Drink, the Intimate Relationship Between Women and Alcohol, has shone a light on the growing problem of alcohol abuse among women an emerging crisis of health and well-being as our society evolves. A feisty and courageous speaker who determined that her own journey could find greater meaning if it helped reveal a path for others, engaging with empathy with those she shares her message of adversity, exhorting us all to discover the resilience that lies within. An engaging figure who brought her powerful recollections and thorough knowledge to Queen's as a panel presenter on binge drinking as part of the Rethink the Drink initiative in 2017. Winner of seven national magazine awards, the Southern Journalism Fellowship and Atkinson Fellowship in Public Policy, co-founder and co-chair of the National Roundtable on Girls, Women and Alcohol, a pan-Canadian advocacy group and named CEO of the Pine River Foundation, an organization that supports the Pine River Institute, a residential treatment program for youth aged 13 to 19, struggling with addictive behaviors and often co-occurring mental health issues. A compelling voice in our public discourse, whom we are privileged to welcome back home to her alma mater, proud to bestow on her this, our highest award. In the name of this university and by authority of Royal Charter, I admit Anne Dossett Johnson to this degree with all of its rights, privileges, and responsibilities. Congratulations. Dr. Johnson, could you please address convocation? Thank you so much. Good morning, Chancellor Leach, Principal and Vice Chancellor Dean, congratulations, Rector De Silva, honored guests, 
and graduates. It's such a privilege to be back here in Grand Hall this morning at Queen's University, my alma mater, to be awarded this honorary Doctor of Laws. You have no idea. Thank you, dear Queens, where my grandparents met and fell in love for this distinguished award. It means so much to me to be here today with family and loved ones. And I look forward to getting to know some of you during the luncheon. You know, when I was on at Queen's, I was on a very windy path to what my life's grand purpose would be, what the principal just referred to. My sister grew up wanting to be a dog, and then she discovered she'd have to be a dog's doctor, and she's made a brilliant career in vet medicine and way beyond at the University of Guelph. And I always envied her her path. Mine was so much less straightforward, as many of yours may have been and may be. I grew up wanting to be in the creative arts, and my journey was very different from that of my sister. It was, in short, a road full of detours. You know, there's a joke they tell about a writer like me who finds herself at the pearly gates on an extremely busy day. And she hangs around texting her friends for a little while in the lineup for about three hours. And then she gets tired of waiting and she asks to see God. And she goes up to the front of the line and God asks what they can do for her. And she says, I'd like to take a sneak peek at hell. And God says, of course, you've got lots of time, first door on the right. So she wanders down the hall and she opens the door and she sees what is her worst nightmare, a room full of writers chained to their desks, clocks whirring around and round and round, sweat pouring off their brows. Clearly they've all missed their deadlines. <laughs> she goes back to God and says, I don't know if I have time, God, but do you think I could take a sneak peek at heaven? God says, sure, first door on the left. She wanders down the hall and she sees the same darn thing. Writers chained to their desk, claws, clocks whirring round and round, sweat pouring off their brows. She goes back to God and says, they've missed their deadlines. I don't know God. I don't see much difference between heaven and hell. And God said, oh my dear, there's a big difference. In heaven, the writers get published. <laughs> In heaven, the writers get published, and you know, that was my heavenly truth. I spent a career getting published, which was wonderful for a person who graduated here in 1975 with a degree in history and English, who did not have any idea of what she was going to do with it. Like most of you today, or many of you today, I did all my growing up at Queen's. My greatest learning happened on my so-called detours at Queen's University. And for me, that meant running the Queen's Arts Festival, which I took from a three-day event to a week-long extravaganza. That was my pride and joy, and I gave up a course that year to do it. My love of journalism was spent during the detours I took in the periodical section of the library, Douglas Library then, when I was meant to be writing essays. I would meander in to write an essay and find myself getting lost in a copy of the New Yorker or the Atlantic. And this is one of the places where I found my path forward. And this is the beauty of a liberal arts degree. I learned how to explore and how to investigate and how to grow up to be the person that I needed to be. And I did that all on detours at university, I wasn't a really good student. And so I'm a big believer in taking the detours in life. Truly, you have no idea where your greatest opportunity is going to lie. We live in a culture that tells us to find the quickest route to success. And I'm here to say something very contrarian. Notice what happens on the detours in your life, where the signposts are. It may give you the most profound clues about your life. In fact, I got my big break in journalism on a detour when I was hosting at what was then known as the Keg and Cleaver, now known as the Keg. I was seating a table of disgruntled editors from McLean's magazine who had just been in a fight with the editor, 
they were having drinks, and one of them asked me after having a couple of drinks what I wanted to do with my life. And that conversation led to an interview. And that interview led to my very first job as a researcher at McLean's Magazine. And what was it on my resume that led Peter C. Newman to hire me? The fact that I'd run the arts festival at Queen's University. Two detours led straight to the path ahead for me. I was blessed by being taught by some of the greatest names in journalism, Michael Enright being my first mentor, who was a great admirer of some short book review that I wrote on summer cottages, and it was the beginning. In fact, my greatest gifts in life came with the reality of my press pass, and I'm happy to, know, to, happy to say that I enjoyed more than 40 years as a journalist, one of the few professions where you're paid to learn for a living. It was an utter joy. I began my career covering the death of John Lennon outside the, Dago the Dakota with Yoko Ono watching us from the window above, a, a cub reporter that night. And I went on to interview great artists like Jean-Luc Godard and Mary and Christopher Pratt covering the cultural scene. And years later, it was on a detour from cultural reporting that I accepted a six-month job to rank universities, which I thought was one of the silliest ideas I'd ever heard of and ended up spending the next 15 years of my life on this amazing project which triumphed or trumpeted the value of higher education and said it was important for our culture to reinvest in the health of that education if we were going to get anywhere. Which led to the launching of the McLean's Guide to Universities and an advocacy role fighting for an investment in higher reinvestment in the higher education. And during my career, I took two major detours with two fellowships, luckily, one being a Southern Fellowship in Journalism at the University of Toronto, where I studied cultural policy, and the second being the Atkinson Fellowship in Public Policy, for which I spent a year of my life looking at the closing gender gap on risky drinking, how the alcohol industry is taking aim at women pinking the market with skinny girl cocktails and berry-flavored vodka, and so on girls' night out wine. And that turned into a book. That turned into a major international book deal and the publication of Drink, the Intimate Relationship Between Women and Alcohol. All on detours, following my nose. So follow your nose as much as possible. As Principal Dean says, find your purpose. And my purpose was found this way. And now I'm back at school getting an MSW, another career where you're paid to learn, writing midterm and essays and prepping for a brand new career as a psychotherapist. As the Beatles say, it's a long and winding road. Queens gave me the confidence to explore and to take those detours. And Queens gave me lifelong friends to have them beside me along the journey. I applaud all of you this morning on your accomplishments and on your graduating. As the poet Mary Oliver asks, tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Let me remind you, exhort you to make the most of the detours that your one wild and precious life will present you with, and it will. Take careful note of them, savor them. You can plan for other things, but it's my experience, it's the detours you'll remember. As John Lennon said, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. And this is my experience. My point is, sometimes, many times, detours can lead straight to the path ahead. And for that reason, we need to pay attention to them. To live long enough and you'll know this to be true. Savor your friends the great ones you've made here at Queen's on this precious limestone campus. They will be here for you in the years ahead, as mine have been. You are among the luckiest students in this country. You are among the brightest students in this country. You are about to embark on your life's great adventure. I wish you all a great adventure ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Dossa Johnson. The message to students, graduates, that life is not always a straight line and that the detours are where we learn the most is, is something they, they should cherish going forward.